People have been experiencing, dealing with, and writing about stress for quite a while. In fact, Solomon, king of ancient Israel, said 3,000 years ago that the work that was done under the sun was distressing for me. It felt like grasping after the wind. How many of us can relate to that feeling, grasping after the wind? I've heard stress described as uh, running through deep sand or having something inside that's just stretched really tight. The word itself is just understood. It's assumed that we know what we're talking about when we say stress. While most of us inherently know what stress feels like, I think it'd be helpful to define the term before we go any further. I've still got my high school debate coach's voice somewhere in the back of my mind saying, James Thomas, define your terms, otherwise your argument won't be valid. So here we go. One expert says that stress is the body's nonspecific response to any demand made upon a person. Another says that stress is a state of tension experienced by individuals who are facing extraordinary demands, constraints, or opportunities. A different approach calls stress any difficulty that causes worry or emotional tension. A state of mental or emotional strain or suspense. So let's say that our definition of stress is what we experience in response to stressors. No one could throw a big wad of stress at you, but they could cause you to feel a lot of stress by throwing a big wad of stressors at you. Stress is a response, emotional, cognitive, and physical all at the same time. This means that stress affects your feelings, your thinking, and your body simultaneously. Okay, now let's talk about the difference between acute stress and chronic stress. Acute means a rapid onset and a short but severe course. Examples of acute stressors would be things like getting cut off in traffic, uh, the sudden betrayal of a trusted friend, um, being served an unexpected lawsuit, or hearing a suspicious noise in the dark. Often, our bodies recognize a stressor and start responding before the reality of the situation reaches our conscious mind. Have you ever felt the hair on the back of your neck stand up? That's your body going into high alert, getting ready to respond to a stressor, getting ready for action. Have you ever gotten that sinking feeling in your stomach? Well, that's your body diverting blood flow from secondary activities like digestion to primary survival activities like running, thinking, and fighting. During an acute stress response, our brains dump loads of powerful chemicals into our bodies. All our systems change gears and get ready to go. Now let's talk about chronic stress. Chronic means something that is long-lasting and recurrent. So chronic stress is going to be something that happens over a longer period of time. Chronic stressors might include irritating problems at work, a personality conflict with a spouse, a lingering illness, or long-term financial struggles. Unlike acute stress, chronic stress does not present itself with emotional flashing lights and physical red flags. This is unfortunate because chronic stress is common and destructive in a huge portion of the population. Most of the time when we're talking about stress, we're talking about chronic stress. Your body's chronic stress response feels a lot different from its acute stress response. Rather than an adrenaline rush, a full fight or flight response, and rapid mental refocusing, the changes that you experience with chronic stress are going to be much more subtle. You might notice a constant state of slight mental preoccupation or emotional tension. Some people live in a constant state of chronic stress. For them, it's just a normal state of being, a normal set of feelings. That's where the danger of chronic stress comes in. It's so subtle that it can wear in us for years, mentally, emotionally, and physically, before it's finally detected. The good news is that it's much easier to prevent and treat than acute stress. When we bring the easily suppressed chronic stress response into our conscious lives, the stressors can be gradually eliminated or managed. This requires a safe, healthy, supportive environment. Otherwise, the newly recognized symptoms of stress are just going to cause more discomfort and distress. I'll cover the specific signs and symptoms of stress to help you recognize the stressors in your life in a future video. Meanwhile, Check out the website for more on the definition of stress. Stay tuned or subscribe as I expand this series on stress.